Hello my loves and welcome to the start of a brand new reading vlog and a reading challenge. Let's see if I am successful at this at all. Hi friends, I'm Lexi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's actually the very start of the year and this is the official first vlog that I'm vlogging. So I have a couple New Year's resolutions for 2024. One of which is that I want to be on my phone less often. I actually love being on my phone, okay? I love scrolling TikTok, I love Instagram, I love watching YouTube videos on my phone, but like I really find that once I start scrolling, that's it. That's my day. And I tend to already have problems with focusing on things for long periods of time. And I really feel like being on my phone all of the time, especially like scrolling TikTok and Instagram has actually shortened my attention span and heightened my anxiety. And like 2024 is the year that I really want to maybe dial back a little bit on the procrastination station that is my life, you know? And so one of the things that I'm gonna try to do is actually get my screen time down. It was was really, really high and I have already been actively trying to put my phone down and yet it's still quite high. I'm gonna be honest with you, my screen time is, it's pretty high. And so I'm hoping actually that this challenge maybe helps me to have something to do other than reaching for my phone. So today I am going to be swapping my screen time for reading. And so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and see what my average amount of time is in the week. I'm gonna take that number and I'm just gonna apply that number for every single day starting next week. So not today, but like starting next week. I don't have like a set TBR plan for this, which I think is good because I always, you guys, <laughs> I'm gonna be really transparent. I love, love specific type of vlogs, but I'm gonna be honest with you, nine times out of 10, I will create a specific TBR for a vlog, film the intro, and then immediately afterwards go, I don't wanna read any of those books anymore. I don't know why, I, I just, I think like my brain does not like rules. I think that's what it is. So I'm actually really excited about this challenge because it's a dedicated reading vlog, but there's no set TBR. I might start reading a book and then DNF it and go on to the next one. And that's fine as long as I'm reading. So again, the concept, I'm going to look at my screen time, the average amount of time that I spend on my phone, and I'm going to swap that time for reading. So instead of reaching for my phone, I'm gonna try my best to reach for a book. And then at the end, I'm gonna see if my screen time actually went down at all, like if that helped or if it didn't and it was just a fun excuse to read more books. Either way, a win is a win. So before I tell you what book I think I wanna start with, let <laughs> <laughs> Let's check out my current screen time. Um, and I will say, I'm just gonna be super transparent, it was a lot worse than this. One of the reasons I made this a New Year's resolution was because I quite literally looked at my screen time during the last week of December and was like, oh my God, <laughs> that's embarrassing. So I have already been trying to like use my phone less, but alas, you guys, I, I, I just like live on my phone. Okay. so. <laughs> down 28% from last week and it's still so bad. Oh my God. My daily average screen time right now is four hours and 36 minutes. Let me take a screenshot of that. How long have I been on my phone today? Today I've been on my phone for two hours and seven minutes, which I guess it's like, it's not that bad, but honestly it kind of is. So that's what we're working with. I'm going to be trying to read every single day next week, basically for four and a half hours. I don't know how I'm gonna do that. I I don't think I thought this concept through. I don't know how I'm gonna do that because I still have to work, but it's gonna be a fun challenge. The first book that I think I wanna start with and I'm really hoping I enjoy it is this book, which is called Poor Things. And this is by Alistair Gray. I don't know if I'm gonna like this. I might not vibe with this. I'm gonna be honest. The reason I'm picking this up is because 
I've seen the trailer for that one movie with Emma Stone, but I keep seeing this trailer everywhere and it just feels so whimsical and like the cinematography looks so great for it that I really, really wanna see it. And the name reminded me of a book that I had heard before. I think I actually heard about this on booktube from Jen Campbell, but I do not remember the video and I don't remember her thoughts on this. And so I think what I wanna do is read this and then go see the movie. I think that'll be kind of fun, compare them a little bit. Do I know what this is about on any level? No, I don't. That is the first book I think I'm going to start with. I'll let you know if I like it or if I end up putting it down. But yeah, that's pretty much the concept of the vlog. Very excited to read every day for four and a half hours. And I will let you know how it goes starting Monday. Hi, my loves. Okay, so it is Monday and it is day number one of this challenge. And technically I've already started the reading challenge. If you hear anything, that's the wind. Oh, can you hear? Or is it too windy? I hope you can hear. We're starting day number one of the reading challenge. And actually I am not starting with poor things. See, this is what I'm saying. Like I can never stick to a TBR. I decided to actually start with less. I wanna say it's like by Andrew Greer or something. I will give you the synopsis in just a second. I have started listening to the audiobook for this while I was getting ready today. I don't remember how much I've read, but I will update you and tell you that in just a second. Let's go inside though, because it's really cold. <laughs> okay, so this is the book that I'm actually starting with. Andrew Sean Greer, got it right. It's about this guy named Arthur Less. Arthur fell in love, and then that guy is gonna actually get married to somebody else to sort of like have a polite way to decline the wedding invitation. I don't know why he was invited to the wedding of his ex-lover, but to have like an excuse to not go to the wedding, he decided that he was going to say yes to all of these different conference invitations that he has been invited to because he's an author. Not necessarily like a well-loved, respected, super successful one, but he is an author. And he has had mild success with one book, I think. And so in this book, we are following him as he goes all around the world saying yes to all these different conferences. And basically he's kind of just trying to stitch back together his broken heart. It's really good. I just started, I'm not that far in. Actually, let me get my phone so I can tell you how much I've read today. Okay, so I have been reading for 53 minutes. It's time for lunch now. I'm going to make myself something to eat super quick. And then usually for my lunch break, I like to walk my neighborhood just a little bit. I usually listen to a podcast or music, but today I will be listening to this book. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my lunch and then we're gonna go for a little walk and read a little bit more of less. Don't look too closely at my kitchen, it's messy. So it is 8.14 at night. I am like weirdly tired for it only being 8.15. And according to this, I have read today for two hours and 15 minutes which means I need to continue reading until like, like 10, 15 tonight. I'm on chapter Less German, which is page 99. And this book is actually like really funny. I really enjoy a lot of it. I feel like it's not really trying to do an eat, pray, love thing. Like Arthur Less isn't necessarily finding himself. In fact, if anything, like every single place where he has visited, something major has gone wrong. When Arthur Less visited Mexico, it was so funny. He was only in there for like a day or to. The tour guide took him to every single cool place and like on, on a driving tour and was like, this is one of the best museums ever. Like you cannot miss it. And Arthur Les was like, okay, great, let's go. And he was like, it's closed. <laughs> but he did that for like 
I'm not even getting you like 12 locations. And it was honestly like peak comedy. It was really, really funny. Arthur Les is definitely reflecting on like his past, his past love, his past mistakes. And he's thinking back to his youth and also a lot about his past lover, Freddie, who is getting married. And he's just so sad, but he's not necessarily like moving on or discovering anything new about himself right now. It's more just a very honest and open reflection of what's going on in his head. So I think that's it for my update. I'm gonna go ahead and read more and then I will update you as soon as the clock actually hits the correct time. And then I'm gonna end this and go to sleep because I'm, I'm already tired. Hello. Okay, so day one of the experiment is done. As you can see, I officially have hit the four hours and 36 minutes mark and I am on 131 of less. That's all though, that's the first day. I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Hello friends, it is Thursday and I'm here to give you a little bit of a reading update on the experiment. First of all, <laughs> I did not hit my goal on Tuesday. Tuesday, I think I read like a total of two hours. Maybe it was only two hours, I don't know. But I did not hit the four hours and like 36 minutes. <laughs> was not off to a great start. Yesterday, however, I tried really, really hard to redeem myself and I ended up reading for over five hours. Feel really, really great about that. And I ended up finishing the very first book for the vlog, which was less. This is probably gonna make my top 10 of the year. This book was unbelievable unbelievably good. I didn't really understand the direction of the book. You know, it kind of gives you like eat, pray, love vibes. Our main character, Arthur Less, breaks up with his ex-boyfriend, ex-lover, and tries to go and find himself across the world. And I would say it's not really like that. It's, we're not really like doing eat, pray, love vibes. It is, however, a portrait of love, of aging, of humanity, learning more about the complexities of love. A lot of it is like a reflection on aging. I just thought that the book was so beautiful. And the end, when I was reading the last page, I was sobbing my eyes out. It's such a great book. It was honestly like one of the best books I've ever read. Once I finished this, I started a second book, which is not in this vlog at all because I'm reading it for a different vlog. And then I finally picked up Poor Things, which I am in the middle of right now. This is by Alistair Gray. And I'm on, I want to say like I'm on page 70 or so. And I've been doing pretty well today because I think I'm at two and a half hours. I ended up reading a lot of this this morning. I went to a cafe. It was really, really cute. I went to my favorite favorite cafe, mean mug, amazing. And then I also listened to this when I went on my morning stroll and I just had like a good time. This is a weird little book. <laughs> There's a doctor who basically pretends to be Dr. Frankenstein. He's a good guy. He's just really odd, but he's like lonely. He discovers a woman who tried to end her own life and she is pregnant. Basically what he does is he takes the baby's brain and he puts the brain in this woman. I know it sounds weird. It sounds weird. Um, we have a little bit of like a Renesmee thing going on because it's like a, a full grown woman who's 25 and she has an infant's brain, but the brain is growing rapidly, like more rapidly than a regular person because the brain is trying to match the age of this 25 year old woman. So when I say like Renesmee, I'm talking about from Twilight, you know how like the baby like started off as a baby and then you like blinked and it was like a full grown toddler and then you blinked again it, and like the baby was even older, it was weird. That's kind of like the vibes of this lady whom the doctor has named Bella. Bella starts off with the mentality of like a little, little kid and she rapidly is like aging. And you can kind of tell her mentality's age based on who she is interested in. So like who her friends are, who she's hanging out with. Eventually like her brain catches up to, I, I wanna say like a little bit more of like a teenager kind of, you guys, it, it okay. It's a weird, quirky little book, okay? But just know that she is growing up to like the age of consent. But basically she is now in her brain, more like the age of consent, so like, 17, 18, 19, whatever. It's really fascinating because there's this great quote in the book so far where the doctor is explaining, Bella doesn't know shame because she skipped all of the years where like you kind of are like ashamed of your body, especially for women. They get embarrassed when they get their periods for the first time. When their body changes, it can be really awkward and uncomfortable and they can feel really unsure of themselves. But Bella was just born as this beautiful 20, five-year-old 
girl and she has like the mentality of a kid or she did until she started rapidly aging and so she doesn't know to be ashamed of herself and it's just really fascinating because i think a lot of the book is is really asking like what maybe would women be like and specifically people be like if there wasn't a lot of shame involved in growing older? I don't know if I'm explaining this correctly, but so far I am very, very fascinated by the tale and it's just very quirky. Today I'm filming a video for my channel, but before I did that, I actually wanna go and get lunch. I'm craving pizza, so today we're eating pizza. And then when I come back, I'll go ahead and film the next video that I'm hoping to put up on my channel. But before I run run out to lunch, I thought it might be kind of fun to show you a little bit of a book haul. So I went to Barnes and Noble yesterday, I think yesterday I was in town, I was buying supplies for um, two different videos that I really, really wanna do this month. While I was out, I was like, let me just pop right into Barnes and Noble and see what they have. And I found some stuff, you guys. I found some stuff. Sorry, I didn't record while I was in the store. Honestly, I was just like living in the moment, you know? Not a care in the world, not a camera in my hand. The first book that I picked up is the paperback version of That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon by Kimberly Lemming. This was actually tied for my favorite romance of last year with Half of a Soul. I just loved it. I read it on Kindle from Kindle Unlimited, but I just decided, you know, I kind of want like the physical edition of it just because it was such a great book. The next one I got is another movie book thing. So like they've just made the movie adaptation for Aline. And honestly, like I'm just into reading books and then watching the movies. Like I think that's just my thing right now. I'm doing that with poor things and I thought I would do that with Aileen. This is by Otisha Moshfeg and I don't really know anything about it aside from the fact that the trailer looks so cool. It says this Christmas season offers little cheer for Eileen, a young woman trapped between her role as her alcoholic father's caretaker in a home whose squalor is the talk of the neighborhood and her day job as a secretary at the boys' prison. Consumed by resentment and self-loathing, Eileen dreams of escaping to the big city. In the meantime, she fills her nights and weekends with shoplifting, stalking a buff prison guard named Randy and cleaning up her increasingly deranged father's message. When the bright, cheerful, and cheery Rebecca arrives on the scene as the prison's new counselor, Eileen is enchanted and proves unable to resist what appears at first to be a miraculously budding friendship. Her affection for Rebecca ultimately pulls her into complicity in a crime that surpasses her wildest imaginings. And then I picked these three books up. I don't know a lot about them. I think these are all literary fiction and I think they're all adult. The first one is The Disenchanted Enchantment by Celia Bell. And this apparently is following Marie, who is very unhappy in her marriage. It says, when her husband is present, Maria Catherine spends her days tending to her children and telling them elaborate fairy tales. When he's gone, she indulges in a more liberated existence, one of forward thinking discussions with female scholars. At the center of her freedom is Victoire. It looks like victory almost. The androgynous self-assured aristocrat who steals Marie's heart and becomes her lover, Victorie, Victoire, I don't know how to pronounce that name, possesses everything Marie does not, confidence in her love and a brazen fearlessness. But when a shocking and unexpected murder occurs, Marie must escape. The next one also sounds really interesting. It's called The Sea Elephants. Look at how stunning. That cover is absolutely beautiful. This one says, after the sudden deaths of his beloved twin sisters, Shagan flees his own guilt, his mother's grief, and his father's violent disapproval by enrolling at an all boys boarding school. But he doesn't find true belonging until he joins a traveling theater troupe performing the Hindu myths of his childhood. Welcome by the storytellers Shagun. Is it Shagun or Shagun? I don't know. Shagan thrives, easily embodying mortals and gods, men and women, and living on the road where his father can't catch him. When Shagan meets Mark, a charming photographer, he seems to have fa finally found the love he has always longed for. And then the final book that I have is called Every Rising Sun, and this is by Jamila Ahmed, I think. And the only thing I know about this is that it is a 1001 Arabian Nights retelling, but said from the perspective of, I don't know how 
how to pronounce her name, but she is the person who actually tells all of these tales um, to her husband. But now I think I'm gonna go ahead and take poor things, go get some pizza, enjoy the nice, beautiful sunny day, and when I come back, I'll go ahead and start filming for my next video. With that, let's go get some pizza. It's me, it's much later in the day. I have just finished filming my 61 book reviews. That video is gonna take so long to edit, I can already feel it. It's almost five o'clock. I need to finish filming the intro for that particular video. So I need to go back to my laptop and make sure that like I did it okay. And then I need to film all of the like still shots that I wanted to incorporate for that video. And then after that, I need to post a couple of things onto my Patreon. And then then I'm actually staying at my family's house right now because I'm in the process of moving back home. I need to pick out what books I wanna read tomorrow. So I think actually there's gonna be a big storm tomorrow so I might not be able to come back to my house. So I think I might just stay at my family's house. I don't know. So yeah, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and continue listening to my audiobook for poor things while I film the intro of this video. That's my update. Good morning. It is the morning. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, there's like a thin layer of ice over the entire lake. It's like, it's stunning, but also I don't know if I've ever seen that frozen. Oh my God. Hello besties and welcome back to the vlog. So we have some updates. First of all, you are so crooked. Okay. <laughs> You're crooked because you're on moving boxes. You're just like on a random pile of boxes. I'm so sorry. So here's the update. I had to pause the experiment over the weekend because number one, I was having a readathon and I was trying my best to like focus a little bit more on my Patreon members. Um, but number two, the main reason was that my family came over to help me start packing away my life. We are in a super, probably echoey room filled with lots of packed boxes. My house is total chaos. Like it's all just random boxes and all this other stuff. So anyways, that all happened. And I decided to spend the night here on Sunday, even though like most of my stuff is now at my parents' house and my dogs are at my parents' house. I told them, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna spend the night, kind of like say goodbye to my house, if you will, but then like maybe pack a little bit. Well, then we had a really unexpected big snow day. Like for us, it's a big snow day. For Canada, this would be like, I don't know. I actually really want to move to Canada. I think that'd be so fun. But long story short, a lot of places are closed down. We actually have to move back the moving date because like it wouldn't be very safe according to like the movers and I totally agree. And I have been snowed in at my house since Monday and it is now Tuesday. So not for a super long time. And it's been really nice. I have been packing, I've been cleaning. Um, I took yesterday off. I was really tired after like lots and lots of moving stuff and then some Patreon stuff over the weekend. So I took yesterday off. And today is just kind of gonna be a fun snow day. Mostly today I need to do some packing, but it's literally the perfect day to curl up with a nice hot cup of tea and enjoy the cold, enjoy the snow and have a cozy reading day in. Okay. Okay, now ironically, all of my books are packed up now. So thankfully, like I had this stack with me. Actually, I had to like dig out two of these from a box, but I thought they'd be really fun to read today. So this is my TBR. The first one is this one called The Dutch House by Ann Patchett. I'm not gonna give you a synopsis because I honestly don't know a lot. I saw that the audiobook for this is actually narrated by Tom Hanks, which is incredible. Um, so I know that this actually focuses on sibling dynamic relationships, which I actually really love reading. I love reading about like families and sibling dynamics. We've also got Milk Fed, which was a literary fiction that like exploded when it first came out. This one's about a woman who is struggling with an eating disorder and she falls in love with a woman at a yogurt shop. And she, I think like one of the themes in here is that she has to learn to love herself through the love of food. This Dog Days of Summer is a portrait of like a young friendship 
which I'm very interested in. And this is translated. Actually, I love reading translated fiction. I really want to read more translated fiction. And it's been translated by Julia Sanchez, I think. Then of course, we've got Eve Babbitt's um, Slow Days Fast Company, some Raven Carver short stories, and Wintering, which is all about the power of rest and retreat in difficult times. I think this would be super perfect for today because today's a snow day. I think what I'm probably going to do is start the audiobook for the Dutch house. I'll start the timer there and I'll continue to kind of like pack and clean and I'll give you updates like as we go. But that's my mood TBR for today. My personal goal is to read more than four and a half hours because like I think the goal for the vlog is to read four hours and 36 minutes. I want to read more than that. You guys look at how freaking stunning this is. Like the sun is setting and the lake is just so still. Most of the snow has melted. There was a lot more than this, <laughs> but it's just so like beautiful. It's just such a peaceful, happy day. Hi friends. Okay. We have officially reached the end of the vlog. Technically, it's been a while since I filmed that experiment. I actually filmed that as the very first vlog of the year in January, and now it's the end of February. I was just editing everything back together, and I realized that the last couple of clips that I filmed on the last day were all out of focus. Love that for me. So I am here to wrap up the video, tell you all about the books that I finished, and then if I thought the experiment was a success or a failure. <laughs> but before I do that, I just realized that even though I showed you I was packing and everything, I don't think I ever actually mentioned like why I was moving. So just briefly, in case you were wondering, last year I decided to move out and get my own place. And I loved my house so much. I had so much fun like really making it feel like my home and I will forever always treasure all of my memories there but I'm gonna be totally transparent with you I was really sad last year I moved out way into the country kind of far away from my family um, and far away from like all of my favorite places so the book and cover was like an hour and a half away from where I lived my parents and my friends were all very far away from my house like 45 minutes and I just never saw anyone like I never saw my parents I never saw any of my friends but also I didn't really leave my house because there wasn't a lot around my house. I literally like lived out into the country. And because I worked from home, I just was totally isolated. Like I never saw anybody and I became like very lonely and honestly just like really, really sad. I tried really hard to not ever bring it up in videos or anything because I do strive to have a positive presence online. But truly I was really, really sad last year and I was discussing this with my family and it was actually my dad who suggested he was like you know what you just haven't been very happy for a while because you've been so alone um why don't you move back in and you can save up your money and then eventually whenever you have enough money you can try to find a place in chat so you don't have to be so far away and I thought that was just so kind I love doing YouTube I love talking about books I'm convinced that I literally was put on earth to read books and chat about books whether I was supposed to be a librarian or a professor or a booktuber um, or a writer discussing my own books. Like I just, nothing brings me more happiness than talking about books. And I love, love, love my job. But there's just something about never seeing other people and just fully being online that I think made me just really, really sad. And so I was so happy that my father suggested that. I just feel so much happier overall for everything. So I know that was the right decision, but it was a hard decision because I did really love my house a lot. Um, but yeah, that's why I've moved. I've moved back home and I just feel really, really happy. <laughs> but now let's go ahead and chat about the books. Okay, so for the week, I ended up reading three books here. The first book that I finished was Less and this is by Andrew Sean Greer, and this is an adult literary fiction book. It won the Pulitzer Prize. It was fantastic. It was incredible. It's probably one of the best books I've ever read, and I highly recommend it to everyone. I feel like this book 
tackled so many things in such a mindful and authentic way. The book was not trying to be deep or philosophical. It was more a reflection on aging, on the expectations that we put on ourselves and on life, how maybe things don't always work out the way we think they are, but that doesn't mean that they're inherently broken or bad or failures. It's a beautiful, beautiful story about grieving lost love and also really connecting to yourself and being okay with your flaws and shortcomings. And it was just really beautiful. It was really, really well done. I loved it. I don't feel like it was trying to be deep. I think it was just very authentic and I really loved the humor in this, the writing in this, the pacing in this. I thought the whole thing was really great and very, very well worth the read. The next book that I finished was Poor Things and this is by Alistair Gray. Again, this would be considered literary fiction, but I also think it would be kind of considered like a modern day classic potentially. And this was well worth the read, but it was such a quirky, strange, and weird little book. So if you are not interested in weird books, I don't know if you would like this. It is really, I think, an interesting book though to really dive into. I think one of the best things that it does is actually flips your perspective based on the end of the book, actually. Something happens where it completely flips everything that you thought you knew, and it really makes you question a lot of things. The book does a lot of things. I think it challenges you on perspective. I think it talks a lot about liberation, specifically about sexual liberation with women and bodily autonomy with women as well. The book's tone completely changes at the end and it really leaves you questioning everything, which I actually really, really enjoy. I like it when the endings of books have you rethinking everything. And the ending actually made me want to go back and reread it to see if my mind changed on certain things. It's a very, very quirky, strange book. I enjoyed how immersive the book is. Like I think it had a lot of really interesting things. It had letters, it had pictures, it was a book within a book. And then at the end, there was a completely other take on the book within the book that you just read. It's hard to explain. I'm sure this isn't making any sense, but I thought it was really, really fascinating. I will say, I have no idea how the story plays out in a movie format because it was just, it was very wild in a book format, but I am interested to try watching it still. Um, so yeah, it was weird, but like in a very interesting way and I'm glad I read it. And then finally, I read The Dutch House by Anne Patchett. Um, okay. So I, I don't even think I really mentioned what this book is about. The book is following Danny and the entire thing is completely from his perspective. Basically what happens is he lives in this beautiful kind of mansion called the Dutch house with his sister who's older and his dad. His mom actually leaves the family when he is very young and he doesn't really remember her very well. And then his dad remarries and the mom basically kicks them out when the father passes passes away and they have everything ripped away from them. And that's the beginning of this. Like it says everything on the flap. It's just talking about his memories in the Dutch house and what happened after he and his sister were kicked out of their childhood home and basically stripped away of everything that they ever knew. You kind of think it's going to be a revenge story, but spoilers, it's not. It's not a revenge story. I'm not going to talk about the ending, but I will say I thought this was so unsatisfactory. I was really heartbroken by the mother's decisions and about how the mom integrates herself back into their lives. I was completely underwhelmed at times with the plot. I think the best part was the premise. It was the setup on this beautiful house and the memories that happened in this house and sort of like what happens as they're kind of getting kicked out of the house. I think that is the most interesting part of the story. But really, I feel like the characters sort of let everything happen to them. They weren't very active characters, in my opinion. The ending just felt very tragic to me. Like, I really 
didn't like it actually. I'm okay with sad endings, I'm okay with happy endings, but I just didn't connect to the ending of this one a lot. I also find that with literary fiction, which again is what this is, it's much more of a character study, like plot becomes secondary. So I was completely fine with no plot, all vibes, but the characters I feel also really didn't grow a lot in my opinion, especially like the sister, Danny has a sister and I was expecting so much more from her and I was kind of also sad with the lack of her growth. So I would say for me, this book was a little bit of a miss, but I know it is so beloved in so many people's hearts. I think that the writing was really strong. Like Anne Patchett has a very distinctive writerly voice and there were so many beautiful sentences, sentence structures, and like the way her story flows was very beautiful. However, I just thought that it really stalled out in the middle and I didn't really like the story. Like the best part really was the premise and the beginning. Having said that, I would still read Anne Patchett because again, like she clearly can write. I really did enjoy like her sentence structure and her voice. I just did not personally connect to the story. And I was really, I was actually pretty devastated with the ending. I was really, it like made me feel sad. I was actively upset actually at some of the decisions of specifically the mom, like the mom, I don't know. And actually one theme, I think that is a good theme from this is somebody who looks like a saint from the outside world probably is sacrificing a lot of like their family and like the love that they should be showing to their family because they're showing it to the world. Does that make sense? Like without saying what happens at the end, the kids have a mom who they have been told their whole life is just a saint and she's such a good person and she wants to help so many people, but the mom never really shows that love and devotion that she shows to everyone else to her kids. And I think there's like a line in here that I thought was actually very poignant and very beautiful. And it was, you know, saints aren't always saints to their families. And I had never really thought about that before, but that's really true. If somebody is pouring out all of their love and devotion out into the world, I'm not sure if they have enough time or love left to give it to their family members. And I just, I had never thought about that before. And I did think that was really great. If the story sounds interesting to you, I think maybe pick it up because it was not a bad book. It was just not my story. Do you know what I mean? Like it wasn't a book that I think I was gonna connect to, unfortunately. So that's it as far as all of the books I read. Now, how do I think the experiment went? I think the experiment went okay. I think it really showed me how much time I was devoting to my phone because it really adds up. Like you don't think checking your phone every five seconds is gonna add up, but it really does because it was so hard to then translate taking that time away from my phone and just reading. So that is something that I really wanna work on, I think in 2024, is just maybe putting my phone down a little bit more and staying in the present. I think that's it though, you guys. That is the conclusion of the vlog. I had so much fun trying to swap my screen time for reading. I'm really, really glad I tried it and it definitely shined a light, I think, on how much time I really am spending on my phone. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have made it to this part of the video, please leave me like a little clock emoji. I feel like that would be good for like swapping screen time. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreons over at Fox and Wood. Your support means so much to me. Honestly, it just means the world to me, especially the Ink and Quill Club members. Thank you so much. All of your names will be down below in the description. And to you guys who are just watching, commenting, liking the video, just know that you make my day and that I am so thankful for every single one of you. I love you guys so much. I'm sending all of you guys big hugs and until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book and I will chat to you very soon. Bye.